The fourth step to a science project is to write a procedure or design your experiment. So a procedure is just a step-by-step -step detailed, um, kind of like a recipe of the steps you're going to go through to test your question and to see if your hypothesis is correct. So I'm going to give you a few examples, but first I'm going to talk about your variables for your, for your procedure. There are three types of variables you need to have. First of all, you'll have the controlled variables. That means things that stay exactly the same. And I will give you some examples of that in a minute. Then you have the manipulated variable. That's the thing that's going to change. And then the third thing is you have your responding variable. So that is um, what, what you're going to learn. That's your data that you're going to collect. So I'll go through that when I go through the examples again. Uh, so your, your procedure that you write, one of the best ways is to look through books, science books, um, on something that's similar to the question that you have. Look at procedures that are already out there. Look on the internet. And then try to come up with something that's unique and new for your question. Make it, personalize it, make it a little different. So I'm going to go through a few examples for you. The first example for a procedure is, um, the, was the question, how fast will ice melt on different surfaces? So the procedure that was written was, first, find pieces of marble, wood, clear plastic, styrofoam, and cardboard, each about the same size. Two, make 25 ice cubes out of 20 milliliters of water each, freeze them at least 12 hours, remove them from the ice tray, and put them in a plastic bowl in the freezer. Do not touch the ice cubes in this experiment. Use a plastic glove. Three, put the pieces of different materials of different surfaces on a plastic sheet on a wood table. Write the numbers one, two, three, four, five on each of the pieces at least five centimeters apart from each other. And that's the numbers where she placed the ice cubes. Four, remove one ice cube from the freezer with a plastic glove, weigh it, and put it on a piece of marble next to one of the numbers. Put all the ice cubes on the surfaces on a long side. Record the surface, the number, and the time, and the weight. Do this with five ice cubes. Five, repeat number four for wood, clear plastic, styrofoam, and cardboard. Six, after each ice cube has been melting for 30 minutes, use plastic gloves to pick up and weigh it. Record the time and the weight for each ice cube. For the, in the second example, for um, the question was, does the weight of the paper affect how a paper airplane will fly? The procedure was first buy 15 sheets of 24 pound paper, 15 sheets of 67 pound paper, 15 sheets of 110 pound paper. Two, choose 10 different styles of paper airplanes. Three, build each style of paper airplane in each weight of paper. Four, gently throw each paper airplane off a second story porch at least five times. Five, measure the distance from a throwing area to a landing area in a straight line and write down the results. Now, in this procedure, what, what sh um, some of the things that we learned after writing this procedure was it probably would have been better to do two styles of paper airplanes and to launch them m uh, multiple times, maybe 20 or 30 times each. The second problem with this, when I was talking about controlled variables, there are a lot of things that were not controlled in this experiment. So um, by throwing them off of a second story porch, a couple of things, that, a couple of possible problems of that would be the wind factors could have affected the distance that the, that the paper airplane went. The, um, so it would have been better to launch these. Um, also, if, if they're thrown by hand, they could be thrown differently each time. So a better way to do this project would have been to throw it inside of a building using a launcher and measuring the distance each time. So in, but in this case, the controlled variables are um, how you're throwing it, the should be exactly the same every time, and then the responding, uh, the responding variable is how far the airplanes fly, and the um, uh, the changing variable is the size of the paper. In this final example, the question was, does a person's age or gender affect which memory techniques, visual, auditory, or kinesthetic, will work best for them? The procedure for this um, project was first, write five lists of ten things, 
10 nouns actually, hat, chair, tree, car, use words that are not gender specific. Two, create motions to represent each word in list number three. Dr three, draw a picture using each word in list number four. The big picture needs to include specific pictures of each thing with the corresponding word written near, near it and should somehow link all the little pictures together. Four, write a short story, four or five sentences long, using the ten things from list number five. Five, find at least 40 willing subjects to test individually. Six, give each subject a description of the memory challenges and obtain consent or assent if needed. See attached description of memory challenges. Seven, find quiet rooms convenient to each subject. Eight, give each subject the attached memory challenge survey and results sheet. Have them fill in the first part and return it to you. Nine, perform the test with each subject privately. See attached challenge memory instructions for test procedures. The memory challenge should take approximately 15 minutes, including a rest time before the third recall. Each memory challenge list will be given once and, will, and recall will be tested immediately after about two minutes, after about five minutes. Write their answers on the memory challenge survey and results sheet. 10. One week after initial testing, each subject, ask each subject to write or say what they remember. This can be done over the phone or in person and should take less than five minutes. Compare and graph the results. Okay. So in summary, a procedure needs to have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how you're going to test your question. And it, it, they can be totally, they'll, it'll be totally unique to what you are, what you are testing. You need to make sure that you write your procedure so that there are enough test runs so that your data will be statistically relevant. If you, for the example, the airplane procedure, if you were to launch that um, indoors again, if you were to launch that two times, um, it could just be, you know, it maybe just didn't fly as good that time, just to hit the wing wrong. If you launch it 30 times, you'll have a much more accurate um, a much more accurate average by the time you after you study that. So you want to make sure that you run your test enough times so that it's a relevant answer. Now in a high school project you'll probably need to contact a math teacher to help you to run the statistical studies on your project to make sure that there was statistical relevance to your project.